Twitter used to be funny. Like, do you remember when Twitter was funny yeah. back in the I day? I do remember when Twitter was funny, <sighs> but I would also say that I've been in, in fandom Twitter as a researcher for a long time, mm-hmm. and, like, I'm used to the vitriol. <laughs> I, I had to block a 15-year-old today because they were, like... Not to me, they just showed up on my thing, but they were like, because Isla is in Paris Fashion Week, and they're like, they just don't have star quality. I'm like, these girls are it's just so walking. Bizarre. They're it's just the walking bike. down the street. Leave them I, alone. I miss, I miss, like, there's that, that famous tweet meme about, like, you know, I hate the fact that I have to now put up with 14-year-olds' opinions. Um, and that's, that's, that's my life right now. I get enough tension yes. with some of the viewpoints from my Gen Z students. So, oh, like, yes. sure. yeah. you are right in the industry. They are, they I are am. alive yeah. and thriving. <laughs> Though it's fun to uh, freak them out with, like, you know, I'll walk around and I see someone on AO3 and I'm like, ooh, which ship? And they which one them. are you reading? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, because they're like, how do you know? And I'm kind of like... This is like our backbone. Yeah, this I is, don't know this is my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Boys Love. I told Sunset about you. We have re- we are recapping episode four today and we have another special guest with us today. We have from the world of Academia from the from, from white the, in the Lily White Ivory Towers <laughs> of Academia coming down to talk to the peasants in the field. Well, people we were have. so tired of just our unprofessional and <laughs> just <laughs> common. I was casually <laughs> thumbing through a thesaurus today just so I could have <laughs> some some more eloquent words at my disposal. We have Dr. Thomas Bodinet here on the pod today thank you so much for joining us i i feel a little bit kind of overhyped because <laughs> i'm just as trashy as everyone else it's just like here my trap i hide my trash behind a veneer of um of degrees <laughs> <laughs> um, so no thank you thank you so much for inviting me it's it's a real pleasure to be joining you You're to talk very- about what is a, such a, an exciting series it's literally oh, yeah. how are you how how are you doing it's good to see I'm- we we had dinner like a year ago <laughs> <laughs> almost, yeah almost a year ago because i was in chicago in october last year yes mm-hmm. you think i'd remember my my twin brother's wedding but my brain is just a, a blank um no so so yes yeah, so we, we did at a, a german restaurant which was a lot of fun actually um, yes. and it, was, it, it was uh it was lovely to meet you guys in person and it's lovely to reconnect um here so I, i'm doing well i'm currently on um administrative personal leave because mm. I uh, needed a break and we're not having any teaching right now at my institution. But I'm, I'm down with my parents um, in Melbourne in the south of Australia. Um, I'm actually in my um, old childhood room, which of <gasps> course was renovated the minute I left. Um, mm. But it's, it's um, in many ways, it's kind of fun to be here and have this conversation with you because this is where everything it all began. Changed. <laughs> yeah, like once upon a time, these walls, uh, which you can't see behind the blur, were covered in posters of like Kim Jae Jung and like all sorts <sighs> of like, like seriously, it was, it was, and I had like piles of manga and everything. But, oh, um, yeah. Well, yeah. and I mean, it, talk about a show that is like, we talked about it last week in our, ep- when we recapped episode three with Terry, uh, but yeah. like this show is. I feel nostalgic for th- experiences that I did not and then have. I didn't have, but, it, but, but it's like so immediately transported. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this this series um, is a fan favorite for many people for a reason, and mm-hmm. there's a, also a reason why it was so impactful when it first aired and, and continues to resonate. Yeah, um, Gin and and PP were, were still very rookies at the time when this came yeah. out. In, in some ways, they they had a, a, an established fandom, of course, um, mm-hmm. thanks to My Ambulance, and they were um, signed to a very influential subsidiary of Grammy called Nadal Bangkok. But mm-hmm. like this, the the reason that we've got you know PP hanging with the the greats at various fashion weeks all over yes. the world. And Bugin, like, basically blasting all records with um, his recent film. Mm-hmm. Like, it's because of this 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 drama. Itse um, is yeah. so 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 important 
to the history of Thai Thai media culture. So I really, and, and we're talking about the episode that is like the most critically acclaimed. So I, and, and the, the, the thing that made me laugh is of course, you guys didn't know that when you reached we out did to not. me. No, <laughs> I didn't. We so, were like, Hey, we're checking out, uh, how does four sound to you? <laughs> yeah. Two or four. Sure. What do you want? Prepare yourselves. We were, we had decided we were going to do the show. Cause we had like this little chunk of time where it was like five weeks was perfect. Mm-hmm. And we decided to do it say, and then we had someone reach out and was like, Oh, I'd really like to talk about the show with you. Like I love blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And so we were like, okay, we can totally do that. So we, we set that up. And then like, as it got closer, I just kept being like, this is a show is, you want to talk the to the show that like people yeah. are going to want to like have conversations about yeah. because it's so formative. Yeah. So then I was mm. like, let's just like do a series let's where we talk to a bunch of people. So yeah. it's so, I'm mm-hmm. so glad we've had you here, especially because like, I know how much you know about like what, like, yes. Thai, like just in terms of like Thai media culture, culture impact, especially with like just how like, Thai queer media has like changed the game. I mean, even in our one, one dinner together, you taught us so much already just through conversation that we were like, didn't even know that that was like kind of what we were getting into. So yeah, it was crazy that you made us sign an NDA at the dinner table. <laughs> that, that was surprising. I will say. <laughs> gotta, you know, gotta keep, keep it all, keep it all locked in. I mean, as someone who actually does sign NDAs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Before we get into it, I just want to, do you want to do a little like who, who are, what, you? what's your deal yeah what's your whole what thing is my deal? <laughs> this is very existential <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll put on my academic you know those um those not the mortarboard but the pu- puffy um flop, floppy hats that academics wear yeah. that's oh, yeah. actually cool. so that's called a bonnet um oh. it's curious so i'll put on my my bonnet my which bonnet. is one of the, the the privileges of being a phd just imagine <laughs> that it's, it's there flopping Sufi. around i'm a senior lecturer in um actually new title senior lecturer in global cultures at macquarie university in sydney australia um, i'm an anthropologist by training who has been exploring the global spread of east and southeast asian media and how that has been impacting um, knowledge around gender and sexuality with a particular focus on LGBTQ plus populations. Um, some people may know me from Twitter as um, someone who talks a lot about BL, <laughs> um, perhaps too much about BL. Um, and I am the author of a recent book that came out last year called T- Boys Love Media in Thailand, Celebrity Fans and Transnational Asian Queer Popular Culture, which came out with Bloomsbury Academic. It's the first English language monograph exploring the boys love phenomenon in mm. Thailand. Do you want to do a quick disclaimer of like a, a common refrain that you show up whenever there's discourse in the culture about the term queer baiting? Do you want to just oh, quickly yeah, let's define that, that, that for the girls so they that- know what yes, that is? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like so, so, so some people like I. Depending on my mood, I can be gentle or I can be mean. Um, and, um, basically, this this term queer baiting is is something that that has spread throughout discourse um, and is not a particularly useful term Mm -hmm. because it's often utilized or weaponized i would actually argue um to refer to things that it is not actually representative of so so queer baiting within the scholarship of media and 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 film studies and it emerged as a a a term to make sense of phenomena that were occurring in in the kind of late 1990s early 2000s in the north american context within which there was media being produced that was teasing or promising through its advertisements through its promotional material through the ways it was structured that there would be some kind of kind of lgbtq plus representation or or romantic storyline or somewhat and then the series did not provide it Mm -hmm. Mm. um so queer baiting is a process through which a media product promises queer content and then does not deliver so if i so if i'm correct you're saying that real life people cannot queer bait no they can't because because it is a term to refer to structural issues within media culture Um, and it's actually specifically focusing more on questions of pr and Mm -hmm. marketing rather than it is looking at representational politics itself. So by that very definition, real people can't queer bait. 
And two, if you see any kind of performance of queerness, even if it is performative, like even if it is like imaginary, even if the people do not identify as members of the LGBTQ plus community, the minute a boy kisses another boy, it cannot be queer baiting because it has provided you with queer content. So although by that definition, <laughs> by that definition, Thai BL and its shipping culture cannot be considered queer baiting because it provides queer content. Yeah, that's, um, I, I've been baited, and then I got the bait, and then I ate <laughs> yeah, the bait. I mean, if it's queer baiting in the and context I, of, like, fishing, then we're all fishes who have been caught. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. It worked. It happened. Um, yes, there's questions about the ethical use of queer representation and mm -hmm. its ties to market power and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's actually a separate conversation. Mm -hmm. to the conversation around queer baiting. Um, and that, that speaks to issues of pinkwashing, that speaks to issues of capitalist accumulation, blah, blah, blah. But we cannot call it queer baiting because that is not what queer baiting is. Um, so those of you who use that term lazily, and I use that like it's lazy, using it lazily mm -hmm. or weaponizing it within your attempts to like, oh, TBL is problematic because it queer baits, or I hate this ship because they queer bait, whereas this ship is more ah! legitimate. Which is the stupidest discourse that exists. Stop doing it because it just reveals your ignorance. Doesn't oh. actually help perpetuate the cause of queer emancipation um, from a political perspective. And you can trust me because I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Your that, doc, doctor recommended. It's Ugh. the one it's the one thing that gr it grinds yeah. my gears to no end, yeah. but I know that I do not have the uh necessary vocabulary <laughs> to explain it in such a succinct way. So I was very excited yeah. to have you on just to talk. Yeah. So that's all yeah. we wanted you for. So thanks for coming on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, read chapter three of my book. Bye. See you guys. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Okay. We no. don't need, to, we don't need to know about you. We don't blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> we are here to talk about this incredible story. When I say now, we do reactions on our Patreon and we watch the episode and then we usually like banter along with it and we mm -hmm. haha and we do joke and whatever. We and normally, yes, we'll typically stretch out like, let's say like a zero base one behind the scenes variety <laughs> show. A 20 Steve, minute YouTube baiting, video. Quit baiting now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, oh. Well, 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 <laughs> uh, a 20 minute YouTube video will stretch out to about an hour and a half because we, <laughs> because just, we, cannot, we cannot stop, stop talking. talking. <laughs> this episode of, of I Told Sunset About You is an hour and 24 25. minutes. Yeah. Our reaction is an hour and 28 minutes because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> there, it is the most embarrassing piece of me. I, I am nervous to have it out in the ether for people <laughs> to experience watching me. And I really was trying my best to make my crying look Gorgeous. Look, yeah, like I was, I was like, say, like to every everyone who is going to be watching this reaction, please get your screenshotting skills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see. Make, so it make it a meme. Make it a meme. Make it a meme. Oh god. It's, yeah, it's it's great. This is the one that we have now been warned about for the past three every weeks single guest that has we've been had like, on. oh boy, just wait. Hey guys, yeah. just be good to yourself after watching episode yeah. four. I mean, I, I remember sending you a Twitter DM when we were tying down times and things. I'm just like, prepare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you when you for you did you watch this in real time when this show came out? I originally? actually didn't because I was at the time I was extraordinarily busy, um, mm. partly managing the nightmare that was teaching online during COVID. Right. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so I actually watched it say when it was finished broadcast about two weeks later, and I binged it. <gasps> so I watched all of it all in one go, <gasps> um, and then promptly climbed into bed <laughs> <laughs> and i slept for a month and i didn't emerge <laughs> until 2022 yeah. Yeah. um and it was one of those moments where i was just like damn my book's case study is gmm tv i can't talk about this um mm. but no so so i i actually remember quite distinctly when i finished watching episode four having to take 
I don't, I don't know if I'd call it a mental health break, but I really needed to kind of like sit there and go like, ha, huh, hmm, time to reflect. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this better have a happy ending or I will like oh, it's jump not good. Yeah. 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 Um, and no spoilers, so I won't, I won't spoil it. Sure. Um, it was very much an energy of like, if you remember in Lord of the Rings, when the king like, pours the oil on himself and walks into the fire. I definitely had that energy at the end of the episode. I did not want to continue, but the, the end is calling me. So I'm very excited. I'm, I'm so hopeful that I'm not going to be destroyed, but I have, I have no thoughts at the current moment. My usual thing though, is that if the Mm. penultimate episode of the series Ends on a sad note. Yes. Then usually yeah. there's an upswing at the end. Usually, I get more nervous when the yeah. when episode eleven of a GMM TV show is like mm-hmm. down to the dumps that or it, it ends yeah. really happily. Then I'm like, yeah. oh no, oh no. The I, mean, I, I will I will remind listeners here that you know, boys love is a form of romance media, and totally. romance media. Rep, like requires the happy ever happily ever after. Mm-hmm. So so no matter how messed up things get um in the final episode just remember like the final the penultimate episode is supposed to end on a cliffhanger because Mm -hmm. otherwise why would you watch it um indeed some of the problems i've had with recent series not naming names or production companies is the fact that they're not building up these climaxes anymore um but it's a is a no, no spoilers. Like maybe it's a breaks the rules. I'm not going to tell you. It doesn't. <laughs> <I know. but laughs> this, this, this final episode, like both thematically and emotionally is the peak of what it's a set out to do. Um, mm. And we have that through some extremely evocative and impactful scenes that just absolutely destroyed the Thai internet when they happened. Oh, um, I can only and imagine. Trickled, trickled through to um, the international fan discourse. Then it generated some really stupid stuff about how Nadal is better than GMM TV because like people were comparing it. And then like my response to that is like Nadal is a subsidiary of GMM. So, which most people didn't know and still yeah, don't know yeah. with regards to like, the, there were, there were moments in this episode. I know we're going to break it down a little bit, so I'm not going to talk about it specifically here, but like that were really key in waking people up in Thailand, but also internationally mm. to the fact that, that BL as much as it is an enjoyable kind of like escapist form of media, that it has the potential to tackle in quite sophisticated ways, very, very important social issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not suggesting that, that it's a was unique or began the trend of, of exploring social mm-hmm. issues because mm-hmm. that's a, that's an ahistorical argument, but one of the things that it's a did due to the fact that it became a mass appeal. This was a show that many non BL fans in Thailand were watching because of the fact that PP and Bilgin had become so popular thanks to my ambulance. Um, mm-hmm. And that, that it was cross generational. So as much as you had your typical BL fans, so in, in Thai, we call them Sao Wai, which means Y girls or Yaoi girls or mm. Nung Wai. Why boys? No why exist in Thailand. It isn't just you know, it isn't just yes. teen girls. It's yep. it's a diverse fandom. Mm-hmm. Um, that like it had crossover appeal, mm. and and that is significant because yes, if we're going to talk about historically 2020, um, in many ways, historically, the most significant BL to air that year was together the series because of its power of bringing. BL into the mainstream in Thailand and, and mm. pulling it into a global phenomenon. But, you know, representationally or thematically or narratively, it wasn't particularly innovative. Whereas it's a was. And I think mm. that that's, that's um, one of the reasons why it's so impactful even now. It's, it's why Bugin and PP still have so much impact. power in the industry, yeah. impact, yeah, star potential. Um, and, and like, particularly, I mean, I'm not downplaying either. Like, they're both significant and powerful, but, mm-hmm. like, and, and very popular. But it was really this this episode that made people take pay attention to PP. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and PP Clit is such an important star in, in Thai media culture, because of um, the ways in which his star persona um, has challenged some of the gendered expectations mm. that sit around 
want, who can be a leading man and who cannot be a leading man, to the point where there is a famous meme in Thailand that is called Pipi Tana, which means Pipi always wins. And basically it means that Pipi is collecting all these men and, like, no matter who he's paired with, he will always have this kind of chemistry with them. And and because he is just so powerful. Um, But then the ultimate joke is, but then Bjorgin always wins at the end of the day. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because who's he going home to? Because who's, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So, so this is, this is like, um, this is the beginning of that legend, the beginning of, of Pipi Tana and, and, Bugin's rise as a as a singer and, and as a performer. So this episode, so we had ended episode three, and they had the moment where they were feeling each other, and they were finally. It felt like it was coming to a head, and then, <laughs> and then you poor, poor summer child. <laughs> <I know>. And, <laughs> and Tay obviously, you know, goes to feel his chest, and there's not, you know, the things there that should be there. Mo- you one would whatever. And he turns away from the kiss. He walks out of the room. That's where we've ended episode mm-hmm. three. So we come into mm-hmm. episode four. We're post that. And they are protect. I mean, Tay is Tay doing is the performance like of a lifetime. Yes. He's like, so how you do it? What's going on? Yeah. How'd, you, how'd you sleep? Did you sleep so well? You study, should we study now? Or what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Did you, when you, I was talking about last week in, in our recap that I had yeah. instances with guys who I was already out and they were whatever they were, they were whatever they were, yeah. but they weren't yeah. out for sure. They're able to, and so they like to it take was, back. It was a like, secret, yeah. But then, like in public, it was like not a. It was yeah. it was a hidden thing. Did you have you had that experience? I think I think most mm-hmm. gay bi men or queer men or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call us, just outing myself, um, <laughs> have that experience. Um, yes, I mean, I I had a a what I call a kissing friendship with, with a friend in high school, for instance. Um, and that, that person certainly wasn't out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wasn't out until I got to university, but I, I lived in a glass closet, if you will. Um, mm. um, though I was out to my, my family by that point. I don't know if I would say it personally resonated with me in, in my experiences of those relationships, but, but this is such, there's a reason that this is a trope that is still explored in, in mm. queer media and is increasingly mm. something that is explored in BL and needs to be there. Um, that, that this is like, not just as, as someone, I was very comfortable with my sexuality. I came to terms with it very early in my life, partly because I happened to find BL manga in a library when I was mm-hmm. 14. Um, but uh, like, I never had that, that (laughs) gender trouble to Mm -hmm. kind of cleverly, um, cite Judith Butler and make myself look fancy. Um, um, I never had that, that kind of like, oh my God, like heteronormativity smacking me up the wazoo, but I've seen people move through that. I had a brief relationship and I'm sure this person won't ever see this, but like during, my my first year at university with someone who was definitely not out and and mm-hmm. they were christian and struggled right yeah um and this this kind of struggle that we see te experience throughout this whole episode is a very natural one and and mm-hmm. i remember discourse of people like, oh, I hate Tay. He's so nasty. And I'm kind of like, no. just look at look at the, the pressures. So, so, like, this episode is beautifully structured. It's to, incredible. To, to indicate the heteronormative expectations that are pressing yeah. on both of these two mm-hmm. young men. Um, and and this, is, this is why it's a – works very well as a queer coming-of-age story as mm-hmm. well as a BL because we see – um, for instance, Tay sitting down with his family and there's the, the brother with the, it's a fiance, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the mum saying like, oh, when will you be bringing your girlfriend home? Yeah. Even mm-hmm. the, the Thai language, the, the, the terms that he use are gender neutral. Mm-hmm. One of the things that's always important to realize is that still the normative interpretation is hetero, mm-hmm. heteronormative. So, so when someone says fan um, about you know, a boy, yes, that means a girlfriend, typically. 
um, mm-hmm. even though it's between both. And 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 like so so Te is living in that that heteronormative universe, as is O Eo. You know, we have a very, and I'm sure we're going to talk about this a lot, but we have a really, really, really powerful scene <sighs> where, where lots of different gendered expectations are explored. Mm-hmm. The bra scene. Mm-hmm. Um, the really, really significant scene in which we see O.L. at night putting on a bra and <sighs> looking at himself in a mirror. Yeah. And then collapsing into an absolute mess. And this is, of <sighs> course, after he's had his massive fight. Right. With mm-hmm. Tear. And, and like after they just made out in the ocean. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like it's, it's a really, it's a really, really, really well structured episode. Like we even talked about, like, why did this happen at the beach? Like, what is the significance of the beach? Mm. And the thing is that this is a, a world away from the normal everyday life. Right. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the secret garden. The secret exactly garden. Right. It's Shakespeare's and, forest. Yeah, it's, exactly. You know, yeah. But even, even then, Te and Oyo bring with them, particularly Te, bring with them all their gendered baggage. And mm-hmm. and that's, it's un, unsurprising that even though we have this this yeah he he has his this deniability and then they mm-hmm. kiss but then it's a mistake and we need to stop and mm-hmm. then oh ill freaking out because like why are you leading me on why are you treating right. me like this mm-hmm. um that's just it's it's just really powerful acting and and the two of them act the hell out of it it's like, so crazy they, it's they, insane to see yeah. the level of storytelling that they're doing yeah. With, yeah. with their performance and, and and like these two, it's important to note, particularly PP. Like, mm-hmm. is they're, they're they're still in in the context of the Thai industry at this moment in time. They were still considered rookies. Yeah, right? very yeah. Like they they were very new. This these are these are complicated characters. Oh yeah. The, in 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 it's a like they're 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 characters that are more than just sunshine boy and grumpy, grumpy rich boy. Right. Like right. we we have characters with incredible amounts of especially tear incredible amounts of internalized homophobia mm-hmm. we have characters who have really strong aspirations about where they want to be and which direction they want to go mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and we have that that lingering question of like what are we to each other and yeah. how can mm-hmm. we reconcile this and episode four is so gut-wrenching because of the fact that there's a universality to that um, experience, not just, I, I would say like the, the thing that's for me is most powerful about this episode is yes, we can talk about how it reflects the queer experience mm-hmm. and then how in particular it, it helps, like it's very representative of how LGBTQ plus youth grow up in a heteronormative society. Right. But it's, it's, it's there's a, there's a universality to it in the sense mm-hmm. that, Adolescence is, is a messed up time and yeah. adolescence is a time when we find ourselves and mm-hmm. like one of the reasons that this series resonated wasn't just because like, oh, yay, LGBTQ plus material and like we're going to teach all those stupid Salwai girls how to, mm. uh, you know, that, that wasn't what was happening here. Right. What was happening here was a very sensitive exploration of adolescent life Mm -hmm. and and this for me was why i found episode four so powerful we can bounce around the whole episode because the episode kind of is in this constant theme of like a them going them with the fallout of Mm -hmm. the last night and then the kiss so that is like a running thing but also there's this theme of like i want to help or reaching out for help offering Mm -hmm. help but like maybe the help isn't what is actually needed at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So we have to, uh, let's talk about the bra scene. Cause I think <laughs> I, I just, it was happening and I couldn't believe I it was couldn't happening. Believe- we, our reaction was so like, we felt like we wanted to just crawl out of our skin just because it was so tense. And I, I was so nervous for him. Right. Cause I didn't know what could happen in the moment, like someone could have walked in, even though we had just come from a scene of him crying to his parents and his, his mom and like him asking, like, are you proud of me? I think, I don't think you're going to be proud of me. And his, mm -hmm. and both of them crying with him, telling him that that, like, there's nothing you can do that will make us like not be proud of you. Mm -hmm. And then going into this scene of like, just that feeling of 
not wanting to be in your own body. Right. Putting on this bra. So afraid for him that like someone was going to walk, walk in, in and do something. But then it was worse. And he <laughs> took a photo of very, very like sexy, sexy, sexy. sexy. We were though. like, she's giving doll. It's like so it's hot. really it's good. So hot. And then the immediate regret of deleting it and then just crumbling into tears, like feeling mm-hmm. just dis- like disgusted in himself. I love how I love the ambiguity of you don't know if the if the if they're saying that he that that OAO is a character who maybe like is is to a point where they are they feel that they are like not in their own skin that they are maybe trans yeah. right or that they're just like at one point I remember being like a teenager and being like if I was just a girl, if I was just a if girl, was it would be girl. so, it would be, everything would be so much like this would, yeah. I wouldn't have to worry about all this. Yeah. And like, it wasn't about me feeling gender dysphoria necessarily, yeah. but it was just me yeah. being like, how about I just am not the, in the situation of yeah. this <laughs> thousands Make, of years. Of- <laughs> what is the one thing that I can magic wand and fix? Right. And that would be it. So that mm-hmm. way there would be no issue. Yeah. yeah. And this is, this is um, like, this is the, the power of that scene is that both of those readings are potentially possible. Right. right? So, totally. Yeah. Um, I've actually, so, so my interpretation of the scene um and this is just a spitballing off the top of my head, but I always viewed it also through the lens of like, okay, I'm going to force myself to be, or I'm going to explore. I'm going to do this because this is what, all, this is what tear wants. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe if I can somehow, you know, put on the bra and, and, and look good in the bra and maybe, maybe that will, will also reconcile our, our, kind of gender difference. And I think that this is a really instructive time to think about how gender and sexuality is conceptualized in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Thailand is not a a society of two genders, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, nowhere nowhere is. But um, historically speaking, gender and sex is is conceived through this this system known as pet, which is very difficult to translate because it's a Buddhist term. but, but basically, it, it's a collapsing of sex and gender. And whilst we have categories such as putai, which means men, and puying, which means women, we mm-hmm. also have ca- categories such as gatai, um, the the uh, lady boys, which mm-hmm. is a terrible right. translation. But it's also, from a Thai perspective, it's incorrect to translate it as trans because mm-hmm. it's different. Right. Um, because the gato character is like a pet is basically they are it's even difficult to translate um, yeah. but they're, they're, they're considered to be the normative partners of putai so so men mm-hmm. um, and, and thus there's a, an element to the scene in the Thai context where it's like okay is, is this particular this character who you know is noticeably effeminate in, in mm-hmm. terms of Thailand's um, gender norms. Um, and is he now exploring, like, well, maybe I'm gate. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's that as well. So this is this is important because it's it, you, you talk about gender dysm- dysmorphia and trans, and that's 100% also what's going on here in, in some way. But within the Thai cultural logic, there's also this pathway. Maybe if I'm gate, then, because gatoi are norm, it's acceptable for gatoi to be with putai, mm-hmm, right. or well, this is a pathway for me to be with or ill oh. as well. Um, and, and so there's this element that that's, it's it's very Thai was a really big part of the discourse. And and one of the things that's significant about PP's career um, and his his identification and, and the ways in which he he holds himself, he himself. Um, possesses another pet category that that um, is sometimes called tut, which is a term that is um, sometimes considered derogatory, but it's also been reappropriated mm. um, in recent years. Um, and it's like a, 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 one of my Thai colleagues, his, his name is Professor Natanai Prasanam at Kasetsat University, and he's been writing a lot about how PP is is kind of significant because he is embracing, he, he uses the term English, he translates to as sissy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. that, like, what, what, what PP has done is addressed a sissy phobia um, within Thai society and mm-hmm. then produced sissy philia. So people are now 
actually attracted oh. to and celebrating mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. these these kind of really yeah like effeminate gay men camp right. and, and so yeah. forth yeah. um and like that's that's the other thing that the power of this scene is that there's there's a like yeah like pp in that bra is hot as Right. Like, you know, so like, he, hot. Yeah. yeah, he is. And I mean, actually, Adam, I saw you post this um, <laughs> earlier. You know, you, you retweeted PP's <laughs> recent photos where he's in like a women's blouse and he yeah. has three cam- camisoles. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's gorgeous, right? I mean, it um, helps that he is one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen <laughs> in, the, on, I mean, in my does, life. So, does, so sure. <laughs> But this is the thing, like, like this, this scene was the moment when up until this point in time, PP was just very conventional in his styling and fashion mm-hmm. choices and so forth. But it was this scene where, where, so as, as I, I think I should flag here, one of the things that I'm always interested in, um, more so than the representational politics of, of a, a series is how that then translates to the, what we call the personas of mm. the celebrities who perform within oh. them. And, and this scene was significant in signaling, and I, I'll use the term coming out, if you will, mm-hmm. um, mm. of PP in this, this new understanding of him as a, wow. a kind of powerful gendered being. So yes, the scene is powerful because of its thematics. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's powerful for because of its role in kind of the, the the broader ideas that this episode and indeed it's is exploring and yes it resonates with people who experience gender dysmorphia or, or mm-hmm. people who who have the crushing expectations of um heteronormativity and the self-loathing that that sometimes can produce but it's also powerful because it transformed pp overnight kind of gendered image within thai mm-hmm. screen culture and and, mm. and thus allowed other people um to similarly address and like and, and perform these sorts of things now he's not once again he's not the first person right, to right. do it, but it's it's more that that his kind of star power and and the success of the series facilitated that and and mm-hmm. so this 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 particular scene is still kind of celebrated um within thai media culture to this day because of its links to PP's subsequent career, if we think about his performances in, in videos such as you know Fireboy and, and, and so forth, like and and the fact that he's just going around PP Tana kissing boys, right? Um, and 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 this is this is for me why I constantly come back to this this scene mm. is because of its announcement of a a new kind of of kind of gendered politics within Thai yeah. media culture or El struggles in that scene. Yes. And yet Fifi in his everyday life and his his fashion choices and, and his his rise to the top is an empowered person. Right. Right. And like if, if PP walked down the streets of Thailand wearing that red bra and nothing else, well maybe some right. pants. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Like the the he would have no no problem with doing so. I started crying I, I teared up at the kiss underwater, which yeah. I also thought it's fascinating to make your kiss underwater where it's, so it's still hidden, right? It's like hidden. It's, it's, it's yeah. below the surface, right? It's, it's not yeah. out in the open. And then they come back out onto the beach and they're doing their back to, they're like pushing Playing. each other and it's all playful yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. And yeah. I loved that. It's like, it was at the, at, at this, at that part where he asks like, well, what are well, we? What are we in? And Tay doesn't really have an answer because yeah. he. But I think what you were saying too about like people's people, I can see, I can already hear <laughs> people watching this and being like, "Oh, he sucks as a character. Like he's such a jerk." Blah 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 blah. And like, I can't, I cannot genuinely cannot wrap my hand around watching this show, which is as well crafted as it uh-huh. is, and is and has laid the groundwork for these characters in such a smart, intelligent way. And not understanding why Tay is responding the way he Right. Is it's understandable to be frustrated with it because right. you know that you they want need to him be together. To, to but, rise above what he yeah, feels yeah, yeah, pressured yeah. by. But like you also I feel the same pressure watching him go through it like when yeah. he when he has the scene with tarn out oh. in the grass and she like she is presenting her she's her like her hibiscus bra her her that rest, she's restful yes. bosom yes mm-hmm. with this jazz playing in the back i'm i like it was just i love that the show like will tell 
uh, uh, will connect these small things that you wouldn't think would then yeah. keep continuing to like connect. I, I'm glad that you mentioned Tan because she's presented uh, all the way throughout as a really sympathetic, kind, yeah. good character, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, so which. BL at that point in time really had a problem with representing women. Um, mm. and, and it's still to this day a little bit, it's not great in, in yeah. some series still. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, so there were some people I would imagine whose literacy was grounded in, in having watched previous BLs and, and then, you know, they've kind of carried across their, their prejudice against these sorts of, you know, I mean, there are some people who are just like, I don't want to see straight men. Right, right. Like, yeah, they don't like, even want to engage in that, like, yeah. complication that, like, right. there's a straight girl yeah. that is also competing. You you experience this amongst queer. I, I actually would say yes. you see it more often amongst queer consumers um, who, who just want the world to always already be queer, um, which in, in some contexts, yeah, great. Like, I celebrate that. But in other contexts, it's kind of like you want to see the struggle. You want to see. I, I think that the, pe the reason that people hate him, and I'm just going to be blunt, is due to a lack of media literacy. Um, oh well, than anything else. Yeah. Like, um, and and like he he's a complicated character. He's a he's a bit of an idiot. Like, I'll be honest. Oh, yes, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And and but but it's natural. He's like, how old is he exactly? Like, you know, he's yeah, like right. he's. A, he's He's young. He's, he's, he's struggling. Old is he? He's never yeah. really been challenged, right? Yes. Like he flies through school. He's so good at his schoolwork. He, everyone kind of likes him. He yes. has class clown energy. He makes people laugh. Yeah. He has this girl that he's been talking to for ages. And so it just feels like, again, the compulsory heterosexuality of like, well, we should just yeah. be together because we like each other. You know, we have a good time yeah. together. You seem to enjoy me. I enjoy you. Mm -hmm. Like, why not? Mm -hmm. But then everything comes crashing around when he realizes his old best friend is so hot now. <laughs> and I get yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, as as always, like, if, 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 if a PP came and walked into your life, I think most straight men would struggle. Um, yeah. Yes. And I, I think that a lot of people forget, um, and even people who've lived this experience forget just how troubling queerness can be when it emerges because yeah. queerness is, is 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 it's like a culture jam it's a shock to the system it's right. a complete transformation and like this poor kid who as as you rightly point out has had everything handed to him on a platter yeah. who is like you know off to do great things at this university in in mm -hmm. the, the the main city where he's going to become this great actor blah 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 um and like suddenly wham in comes this this new thing and his instincts say yes but his brain say no and mm -hmm. like tries to deny it and, and tries yeah, to yeah. pull it down um and and it hurts people i mean he yeah. hurts oil terribly yeah um and and he hurts himself he has the he says you know can't we just be what we are what we are and then obviously oil is like not into that suggestion right. so then he's mm -hmm. like you know what let's just forget it and we'll just we'll do, i'll i won't do it again i shouldn't have done it i'm sorry right. and trying mm -hmm. to just back slowly back out of the situation mm -hmm. to which oao says like i don't want to be friends anymore and walks away and at that point mm -hmm. is when tay breaks down with the yeah. enormity of like losing even even if he can't put the words to it even if he can't say i love him like right. he his heart you watch his heart shatter Break. i honestly it started breaking my heart when i watched oeo like beg and plead of like please yeah. don't like i don't want to his decision of then like if it's if it can't be what it could be, then I don't even want you as a friend anymore. Tay is just like bulldozing through OAO's life right now and, and not <laughs> even like being considerate of his feelings because he can't even sort out his own. It's not exactly even like right. maliciously yeah. trying to not see it, but he just can't even figure it out on his own. I mean, and I, I have always kind of read Tay's, you know, so, so to go back to the scene where he's like, you know, can't, let's not put a label on right, it and right, then right. Well, let's, it was my mistake let's go back to what we always were mm -hmm. i actually have always read that less as, as him trying to deny anything then it's, it's it's actually his twisted way of trying to stop hurting someone who he yes, cares yeah. for yeah. yeah um and of course or else response to that 
is, well, you know, if you're not going to man up and <laughs> make an honest man, woman, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're not going to, like, accept yourself, yes. I don't want to be with a person. Like, he rejects this tear who he knows is a smokescreen, right? Yeah. Which is so um, crazy because I yeah. feel like more often than not, if you're in the situation as a high schooler who you know you're gay, you're with someone you who's will just not, go along. You'll with just it. play along because it's yeah. worth having the experience rather then than being, like like it's so yeah. incredible that OAO has this kind of maturity to yeah. to know to say that no. I, have to, I can't do this to myself like n- not to be crass uh, but like he's fighting his teenage hormones right That's right for sure yeah and i love that he can't even like correctly do it like for him like tay just wants to like sniff hold like he yeah. just wants to like he wants, nuzzle like, neck he wants just the yeah. sensory feeling of like what it means to really want to be with someone mm-hmm. i mean what what tay is looking for is intimacy right, right. Mm-hmm. um and and this is this is the other thing that, that's powerful about and, and why I think that he's confused is because he slipped between the lines of friendship and romance mm-hmm. um, because of that need for intimacy and and the the kind of kind of awkwardness that he has around Tan is is really interesting in that regard. Yeah, because there's the potential to play out the script, but it's not yeah. intimate. It's not, and, and that's and that that's what what O'El can give him. It's just so funny because Which is just happening I, right now. Currently, oh, there's conversation it's, about it happening. What's crazy it about the, the the in, the intimate scenes that they've had, like episode three for me, I when we recorded the reaction, I had to cover my face because I felt like I was watching yeah. two. And there's people. not and there's, and not, there's a lick, not a I mean, lick, there's like, like they have their shirt, they have their shirts, like there's yeah. no, they don't kiss. But right? it is such a a carnal desire to like be as close and <laughs> yeah. intimate as possible that I was like, but yeah. I was like, this is this is way to me feels way more X rated than what I could be watching it in a show that uses yeah. sex more, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. No, I and I, I get that, and like even like there's a the 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 chemistry between those two <sighs> is so crazy powerful, and but Adam- like. We did not realize the, we found out when we recorded episode two in real time that mm. uh, the, the process behind creating the story, the behind the scenes. That they use some, they of, their, use like, some of their personal experience experiences to craft the show. Craft and the I show. wanted to <laughs> walk into Lake Michigan and never be seen again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> um, there's, there's, these two have been friends for a long time. They've been close for a long time, right? Adam and, and I also have been friends <laughs> for a very long time as well. <laughs> anyway, so, so, so they're, they're like the, the comfort that they have in each other and with yeah. each other just plays on the screen really easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that kind of like chemistry is, is hard to manufacture. Oh, um, nice. And this is one of the, the, the big problems from the, for the BL media industry is that they are trying to manufacture it. Yeah. Um, right. So, uh, and I use a, a kind of factory metaphor here because it is a production process. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And like, we can see like just in the way they look at each other, like that's very, very like, I, I, I always say, you know, you can tell how good an actor is by how they can use their eyes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. We call this um, eye acting like yes. one. And honestly, and that yes. scene where he they are just like wandering around the stair the foot of the stairs before they go yeah. swimming. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, PP is like doing the eye acting of, of a lifetime. Like yeah. he yeah. is doting. He is like look it felt very Betty Davis. Very, <laughs> Very Emma Corrin in, in the crown playing uh, Princess, Princess Diana. Diana. Like, it's just like <laughs> the conveying so much emotion of like, try yeah. to get to me, but I don't want you to, cl-. you know, like all of yeah, these yeah. emotions yeah. in how he's physicalizing it. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, there's there's a there's a serious amount. I mean, Tay is constantly eye fucking him too. Like that's Absolutely. the other crazy, yeah. like ravenous, I mean, like yeah. it truly. Oh. 
and and, well, and for me, like I, <laughs> I'm going to be really trite here and say, like you know, there's a reason why people say that like the eyes are the window to the soul. Like yeah. it, it is, it is one of those moments. Like you, you can't hide your emotions very easily through through totally through right. the ways in which we look. Because I mean, there's a reason why if I were to have like mentioned to people the concept of longing, mm-hmm. this deep urge or yearning for something, oh. what comes to mind is a particular way of viewing right Mm -hmm. and and like for me one of the things that i talk about bl is how it produces particular kind of politics of viewing right Mm -hmm. and and one of the big transformations that bl's mainstreaming has played in thai media culture more broadly is the ways in which it has introduced a a new politics of viewing that when two men are together like the, the the queer potentials of homosociality are not dismissed they're mm-hmm. they're actually celebrated um and like this series in the way it, it uses its shots and the way that it, it uses like these intense longings and and the metaphors of looking um and not seeing each other as well i think is is another thing that's a big part of the series and more broadly not just this particular episode we're talking about i'm always really curious about like as a scholar this is the politics of the gays is a really big thing for me um mm. the g a z e or the g a y s why can't it be both and like rejects mm-hmm. or, you know, like, or just put it bluntly. He rejects him. Right. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't stop him looking at him. I know. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and we have that, that's something that we see throughout the series. Right. Mm-hmm. Is, I mean, especially in the classroom, like, you know, when he notices, when he looks um, and it's interesting because what is like Tay's ultimate goal? He wants to be an actor, right? He wants people to look at him. Mm-hmm. Right. And yet he's rejecting a boy who does look at him. Yeah. Right. Um, And he himself can't stop looking. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so like, once again, maybe I'm getting a bit academic here, but the politics of of the, of looking um, is, is a really big theme that, that I I feel like a lot of people don't talk about enough in this series. Tay and Tarn, like all of their yeah. scenes, he's on his phone and she's, and drawing, she's drawing. Right. Then we finally right. get this scene after the kiss, this one in this episode where they're sitting on the purple blanket mm-hmm. yeah. and she, again, she's waiting for him to, to look, look at her, at her and, and she he... is looking at the sky. Yeah. She is yeah. just waiting for him yeah. to see her. Yeah. And then yeah. the only time it feels like Tarn yeah. has ever really just stared at him is at the dinner table later at the end of the episode mm-hmm. when he like has come back from giving up his spot and she knows the truth and he knows that she knows. So she is staring just through staring him right daggers through him. and he is and it's like the first nuts. time she has seen him. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. also think, I mean like the looking obviously the, you know, it's, it plays into like that, the, the looking and the cruising and the identifying of, yeah, of yeah, your yeah, own yeah. like queer folk uh, in spaces that like, that's all we're able to do. Right. It's to like mm-hmm. look a- and look at yeah. each other to be mm-hmm. safe. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. also, even in the storytelling of Tay and Oeo, even as a kid, like people wanted to look like the teacher looked at Oeo for this part in that first mm-hmm. ever little play, mm-hmm. right? And not yeah. him. And it catapulted mm-hmm. the whole rivalry. Mm-hmm. And yeah. even to this point that like, I really think Tay has, con- it doesn't know that it's connecting why people want like look like him so much because mm-hmm. he's now realizing it. And it's like filling all the gaps of all those years yeah. that he missed yeah. out yeah. without yeah. his friend. That mm-hmm. like, it's, I think there's also that bit of resentment that like, I, I hate that I, I look at him and I want to keep looking at him because it is also kind of like the root of like, he should be the one that should be doing this dream. He should be the one that is an actor. Yeah. 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 yeah, Uh, Absolutely. I mean, it is incredibly big of tear to give up his position. Right. I did Um, not, we did not expect this. I know we should have, 
We were yes. sure they laid it out for us. They laid it out two he's, episodes two ago. Two episodes ago, he's yes, the first Bridget. alternate, and yeah. Tay is number one. And Tay yeah. can take the exam. He's so smart. He mm-hmm. knows sp- yeah. Chinese already that he can just take the exam and get a regular spot like everyone else. That's in the first episode. <laughs> he's like, you should have just, you shouldn't have auditioned. You should have just done the yeah. done the admission process the other way and given me the spot. <laughs> And I, yes. when it finally, when they were literally sitting there, he was sitting and it waiting. was when it was when they he asked, how, asked what, what time, time is the cutoff? Is the cutoff? And I was like, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Adam and I were like, yeah. he's gonna, yeah. do that. he's gonna get the spot. Like, what is his motivation here? Right. Is he trying to assuage his guilt, or is he actually genuinely? Yeah, and, and like, I'm gonna be honest. Is- I don't care either way. I got a spot into the fucking college. I would take it. I am different from OAO. Different. <laughs> People who know the show, I've talked about this yeah. before. This is how I got onto prom court at my high school. <laughs> Somebody was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna go to prom," and I was the next alternate. And I said, "Absolutely, that's fine. I will go and I'll wear the sash. I do not care. I don't care how <laughs> I got on the court. I'm on the court." I don't yes. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you think Kamala Harris is like, well, we really didn't go about it the right way, so I shouldn't be president? No, no girl, girl she's taking the spots. Do it. She's taking the spots. I was gonna say it's not gonna stop the other guy. Um, so, oh, so right. this is this is like this is it. Like at the end of that episode, I'm kind of like. I, I mean, I, I I knew he would do it. Like, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, yeah. and just remember, I was I was like spamming watching all oh, of this. So yes. for me, it's just like a very long film. Um, yeah. So you so, were like, that's gonna where it's gonna end mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, like, I mean, I didn't watch it completely spoiler free. I want to also sure. add because like so, so I, I I had knowledge of where things were going in in mm-hmm. some regards. Yes. Like this is the, it was logical. Like he, he he had to do it, and he and I will say this within the world of the like the series and and and, and right. the aesthetics, it, it has to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because he needs to sacrifice something, um, and this this once again I think speaks to like this is where we begin to see a transformation in him, mm-hmm. right? Because he's no longer. I mean, there's a certain selfishness to, to his character, right? Right. Um, like he he very much privileges his own needs and his own desires, mm-hmm. um, and even like, and we see this in, in in the ways in which he rejects or ill. Like you know, his yeah. his 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 motivation there is is yes, potentially not like well, I'm I'm causing harm to this particular person, so let's stop. But his other motivation is like, but I'm really you know causing harm to me. Yeah. Right. Um, so the fact that he gives up this position is is and 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 just remember all of the pressure that's being put on him from his family as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a huge, 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 huge deviation in everything that his character has told us so far. Yep. And so what's his like why? So episode five, <laughs> that's its <laughs> it why did he give it up? I'm not going to tell you. Um, you can probably guess, but right. yeah. I just want to kind of, we've been talking a lot about Bjorgin and PP, but there is another, you know, really talented. <laughs> boss? Are we going to talk about Boss? Kunpon. So, <laughs> yes, I... I love Kumpon, like for various different reasons, um, and like many people, this is my first my first encounter with Kumpon, um, and his character is also important because here we have mm-hmm. the willing, happy, like I will date you, I like you, yes. let's get together, character, and yet or Il doesn't engage. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that this the, the this it I mean it's a fairly common juxtaposition. I mean BL structurally always has the second, the second love interest that is like perfect, right? Yes. That it's like, this is the, this yeah. is the perfect option. Yeah. You should pick and, this one. Yeah. And, and, and the reason that that exists is because it helps to dramatize the struggle of romance because mm-hmm. within romance fiction, there needs to be something that needs to be overcome. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and taking the easy, safe response is, 
one of the things that needs to be rejected in order for the the main couple to get together. Mm-hmm. But the thing about Kumpon is that easy sweet role, like mm-hmm. he, he he elevates it, right? He really does. Um, Oyo has kind of just given up at, in he school. Doesn't school. He doesn't go to school. Yep. He stopped going to. Yep. He's you know he's That's been right, failing yeah. the tutoring again, and so Boss comes to the hotel with like mm-hmm. paperwork the of what he's missed in school and boss is basically yeah. saying like if you need help like i am here to help you please yeah, it's, tell it's me it's the it's the it's one yeah. of the examples of the episodes of offering help offering help yeah. Yeah. he yeah. literally yeah. says like if you need help i will help you just tell yeah. me that you need help and he he doesn't what what i really remember about that character is his sweetness right yeah, totally. like, yeah. He, yeah he's he's like cutie pie um and but also, like, one of the things that I think is interesting is we don't actually get a lot of, you know, we're seeing Pipi and, and Bukin or the characters, sorry, Tan or Il, mm-hmm. um, kind of exploring and making sense of their desires. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, what's really interesting about Bass is it's just like, oh, I like this guy, mm-hmm. right? And we don't, we don't have any of that struggle. Yeah, um, it's, like, resolute in his way. But I also think Bass, and I think the rest of the friend group, too, like, I think... The, I was really scared that you know this could be another example of them ostracizing. When the Oyo. when he sends when the, he sends when, the photo, they had screen capped the bra the photo, picture, and, and I thought that was going to then become the next plot point. Of like, was then it was all shared around, and it doesn't. And they it doesn't. go to Tay on his when he goes to go to Bangkok, and they stop him before they go, and they and go, they, "You have you to have reach to out. reach out to him because we can't reach out to him. We don't know if he's okay. Like we want, we are worried." And even very open of like, we don't know what's going on between you two, but we want you two to still be friends. Mm-hmm. And like, we still care for you. It's very sweet. And you could easily have boss like be a rival and not want to engage right. in that. But he genuinely cares for them. You know? I mean, he's he's just, as I said, he's just a sweetie pie. Like, yeah. and then, like and, and that's his role narratively. I think, it's, I mean, I think that it's good that they chose not to. Um, transform because I'll admit when I first saw it, I'm kind of like, oh god, you know, oh god, photo. yes, like they could have very easily just ramped up the homophobia and heteronormativity and, and made it difficult, right? Nice. Um, but I think that it was quite good that they didn't, um, yeah. in many ways, in the sense that one, they only had one episode and then they would have had to have reconciled a really complicated plot point, um, right. But two, like, one of the, the, the difficulties in, in producing media like this is that you need to have some kind of hopefulness, right? Um, and and, and one of the, one of the, the kind of, um, I'll be provocative here, and one of the failings that we've seen in the history of queer media um, up until only very recently is the fact that it has always been... Um, you know, especially I'm thinking about what's called new queer film of the, the 1990s and, and some of the 2000s, where the there can be no happy ending because queerness right. is denied by mm-hmm. by society. By and, society, and there's, yeah. yeah. And there's been a real backlash against that in terms of um, kind of queer theory with the emergence of, of approaches such as mm-hmm. um, what we call queer futurity and, and, and moving more towards what we call reparative frames of, of, of representation and analysis. Mm-hmm. And, like, my scholarship embraces that very firmly. So yeah. I, I'm glad to see, because one of the things that I will say, one of my critiques of, of um, Itse um, <laughs> is its um, kind of pretensions towards um, cinematic literature by by kind of um engaging a little bit more with the traditions of, of western kind of cinematography and western mm. film telling, rather yeah. than engaging with with um and, and this was this is one of the reasons why i, I fr- was frustrated with that because it gave fodder to people who wanted to use it say as a tool to dismiss oh, what God, was going yes. on in terms of Rather than recognize that it had a, a history that was embedded within Thai media culture, right. because you had you had um, you know members of the production team talking about like oh it's inspired by this and it's inspired by that and like you know in America this and in America that and, and like mm-hmm. that. I remember once at a conference I was asked you know what do you think about the fact that there's now better more artistic BL and I'm just like what are you talking uh, about? Are you- <laughs> and I literally said to them like I don't know what you mean. 
mm-hmm. right? The the kind of supportiveness and and the, yeah. the positivity and 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 the, the the acceptance that we see amongst that friend friendship group mm-hmm. is a rejection of 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 the, the 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 idea that you know in order to deal with the realities of queer experience, it has to all be. You have to sh- Yes, yeah. you have to show that too, and. Yeah, because we've already even, seen that. We've seen that we've already seen in the it. series, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So we needed, we needed, we needed a reparative moment, and, and, yeah. and more importantly, Tear needed a reparative moment because he yes. needed to see that his friendship group would support him. Yes, right? um, totally. Well, and it, I think even more interestingly is like even in the context of like the text gets sent of the screenshot. A, yeah. it's only sent to Tay. To it's Tay. not in a group. It's not in a group yeah. thread, and the, it isn't. I can't believe this. LOL or anything like that. It's yeah. not making fun of him. It's like, what it's, is he doing? What, what is, is he okay? Yeah, what is, what he, is doing? he doing? What is he yeah. doing? I mean, I'm surprised it wasn't the message like, oh my God, look how hot he is. <laughs> I mean, that's what my text I li- Ma- Ma was. I should have been like, like well, oh, but we haven't God. even talked about how the fact that then he goes straight into jerking off, which is like the most NC content we've gotten in right. this show so yeah. far. And he couldn't yeah, do yeah. it. And he can't, he like loses he, his mind. He couldn't do it. Another unsung uh, kind of character and performance. Oh, his brother, Hoon. Hoon, this brother. There is yeah. just like a. a I think it goes with what you were saying about like, we don't have to show the doom and gloom because I think especially yep. with these stories, they are doing it to themselves to, to, to some right. extent, right? Like they are kind of like the, the people that are in their own way and to yeah. be able to see people in their lives that like Hoon will pick him up. I won't even ask why you're crying, but I will pick you up. Yeah. At dinner, I, d- I don't truly understand what's going on. Why when Tarn his mom, is like, when his mom is yelling, when at his him, mom he is like yelling at him, and and, and, and yeah. you know he may be trying to pick the pieces up right now, but he's yeah. just he just wants to conf- like yeah. console his brother. Yeah, it's d- it's that idea of like we're so we are so trapped in these pressures that we think that like they will already automatically not care or, 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 or feel like we've let them down right. when yeah. it's just, they're, they're not seeing the, and I love, I really love that Hoon is not antagonistic yeah. in any way. He is yeah. just there. Yeah. Like, because we all need that. We need, you know, I mean, episode four has some really powerful representations totally. of, of, the, of, of, of familial love. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because of course we also have, oh, L, and his mother, right? No, yeah. I did and not then, expect that yeah. at all. I really thought yeah. that I think because of how we see OAO's, how he's interpreting the pressure, yeah. that I would feel like his parents are probably be like, "You can't be an actor. You, we need your help here in the hotel." Da 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 da. Yeah. And then, but then I, the two scenes that we've, the three scenes that we've seen of his mom and the two scenes of his dad, they are very comforting to him. They love him very much and like yeah. are open to what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's for me what what like I I am always a bit of a sap for for yeah. loving supportive totally. relationships between queer kids and their families yeah. um, and especially because so many people don't i'm right. lucky i'm very privileged that that i do um yeah. for instance um what's very important for me as well is like just to talk about this particular scene with oil worrying about disappointing his mm-hmm. his mother and so forth like i remember when i first came out like I was, I had those same anxieties and, and those right. same mm-hmm. fears and they, they had been chewing me up for years. And, totally. and like both of my parents were, were accepting and supporting, but they were also like crushed by the, the worries of, of right. like the difficulties that I would have in my life. And yep. blah, blah, yes. blah, blah, blah. That's always, yes. what, That's always what it is. Yeah. 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 And, and this is, this is for me, what was really, what, what's really evocative about that scene is that misread because my parents are like, why would we never not support or right. accept you? Right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and whereas my, you know, my, my fears and my anxieties were, were reading things into things that, you know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. it all resonated with me in that regard. Yeah, um, yeah Totally. And, and, and so, once again, I sometimes see some discourse about, like, oh, we need to see more parental conflict, and then they, get, then they start arguing about I live that. with parental conflict. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was like, so, so one of my, my favorite quotes from one of my, my um, interlocutors in the Philippines um, is, like, <laughs> why, would I, why would I want to read stories about people suffering for their queerness? I live that every day. I live it every right. day, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
That's but it's why. also, but it's not, but that's what I think about is the beauty of this show. There are some BLs where it does feel like they exist in this utopia right. where like oh, everyone yeah. is gay and there's no issues. Like, yeah. and it's, and it's magical and it's fun. And I, you, I like yeah. escaping to those places because totally. they're so like, I, like Pip Babe was so crazy. I love, <laughs> but like this show totally, still, yeah. there <laughs> is still Tez's entire character like is trapped in this like, this internalized homophobia. And so it's not, there is not a single character in the show that says, you know, gay people are gross. Gay people, like nobody gets hate crime. Yeah. There's nothing that happens, but there's still the pressure of like thousands of years of culture telling you yes. like, Hey, it's, it's guy and girl to be quite yeah. honest. So like you yeah, still yeah, yeah, feel yeah. it resonant for me. I mean, my, I, we need both kinds of queer media. Like that's right. the thing yes. that Absolutely. I think that's important. Um, and, and like, Yes, it's certainly the case that, that it's a is probably more aligned with with um, in, in Japan we call it like fantasy BL versus social BL. Mm. Um, that's so, so fantasy ha and shakai ha are the, the two Japanese terms. Um, and and yes, it's definitely the case that it's a probably is more um, social BL social. than it is mm-hmm. than it is um, fantasy BL. Um, though of course, all good BLs merge both. Right. Um, right there are pockets and moments where you can just kind of lose yourself in the, the, the kind of longing and the queerness and the, the, the fantasy elements. And, and like when they're like running off to go to the beach and they're all like, you know, and like, yes. and then making out under the water, you know, pause there. Right. Yeah. Yes. Don't yeah. yeah. Turn off oh, the show right and, then. And, yeah. Stop. And then, like, stop the episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like that's that's like that's like a good kind of experience of like it it it, it activates that 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 thing called fin that in Thailand is the the term used to explain that kind of sense of enjoyment. Right. The, yeah. the, the visceral kind of feels, if you will. Um, yeah. But then by juxtaposing happy romantic Finn production with a scene that then follows that is kind of more, more, well, it's it still, it still promotes a, a feeling, but it's a different kind of feeling right. like that. That's, that's really clever um, kind of storytelling. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's something that a lot of the recent, you know, I, I said earlier in, in this chat of ours that I, I'm a bit disappointed in the lack of, kind of um, conflict or the lack of um, kind of like the, the fact that a lot of, of BL series are peaking too, too soon. And then mm-hmm. they just peter out with nothing. Mm-hmm. And like a good story needs to have a number of climaxes, pun right. intended. So like, it's, it's like one of the things that I think it's a gave to us is strong storytelling Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a few companies that probably in, in Thailand that probably need to re-engage with some of that, not naming any names. Um, and, and then there's also, there's also a trend I would say recently, um, with BLs where they're trying to explore, like they're, they're, they're trying to do more than just tell a romantic story. And then they forget that BL is all about romance and there's that too. Right. Um, what I like about it say is that it, it, it manages to do both. It's a romantic story, but it's also a socially sophisticated story. I think that this is constantly goes back to the thing of like anything that is that is coded or seen as like what women enjoy is like seen as less than. Mm-hmm. So like the frustrating oh, yeah. thing of like, people being like, oh, romance or rom-coms are like a lesser genre because women like them. I, that's not necessarily what they say, but that's what they mean at the end of the day. Right. And it's... Yeah, it is, absolutely. It is yeah. so hard to get it right. It is so yeah. hard to get it right. And I feel that now, like, there is some vindication in, like, in terms of, like, um, like Western kind of rom-com discussion where people are like, why don't we have good rom-coms anymore? Like, they all kind of died. And it's like, because 
People Yo, kept doing the thing of being this. like, oh, they're so easy to make. What's the point of them? Only yeah. women go to see them. But they're actually really hard to make. Yeah. They Some are. of them are good. They are. They, they're so, like, the classic rom-coms of the late 80s and early 90s. Like, we're just not getting that anymore. Nora right? Ephron. Nora. Where is <laughs> <he>? Nora's <laughs> legacy? Um, and, and this is, this is like... And I will say this, this is something that Asian media still gets right. Um, like, uh, I mean, yep. RJ, I'm sure you're well aware, like the, the Philippines knows what oh, they're doing with a good yeah. rom-com. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's such a good blend of, of what just funny. And yes. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I actually, um, I'm working with some colleagues in Manila. We're going to be putting together a, uh, a, a panel for the International Association of Popular Romance Studies that's going to be looking at all sorts of examples of romantic media from the Philippines and like that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope the BO watchers, I hope the BO fans that are watching this recap knows that you can get academia in this girl. You can do it if you love this so much. <laughs> You do you can make your own you doctorate can- at the end of the day. You can. Well, I will say, like, full disclosure, because I get this all the time. And, and once again, like, actually, Adam, this kind of ties into what you're saying. Like, you know, this stuff is dismissed because it's silly things for silly, silly girls, yes. right? Mm-hmm. There's a whole academic discipline that looks at, like, romance fiction. Right. Like, mm-hmm. uh, there's, like, a whole academic discipline looking at BL, and so many people will say to me, like, I can't believe you can study BL academically. And my response is always, like, you can study whatever the hell you study want. Anything. Academia. Anything. Like, like, academia, like, there's no such thing as, like, like there's these all topics are legitimate. Um, so if there's anyone watching who's, like, I've always thought about studying this, do it. Do Just it. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, do it. Yeah. We need more. Like I, I, I often used to joke around. Like I'm sick of being the only person that the <laughs> media sources would talk to for TBL. Like there's now other people. I'm glad. Um, yeah. I need someone else, please. Yeah, and, and the fact that we've been able to talk about one for an hour and 30 minutes about an episode <laughs> and just constantly reflect on like, and then there's this bra, and like, and then they look at each other. It's like just, it, it just shows you that that. This media is is powerful and it's it's right. important. There, there's a lot of things that we can talk about and, and right. like we need more people talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, either in my little, as you say, my my ivory tower or out <laughs> in the real world. Just make sure that the ways that you talk about it, you know, uh, are useful and, yes. and not not grounded too much in you know fan wars are not helpful. Fan wars, there. yeah. There, like, you know this why and and like just because i'm here i'm going to put this out here people <laughs> stop, stop pitting couples of the same agency against each other it's oh really my God. um and then like and i raise this because like it's relevant because of that whole like nadal versus gmm tv discourse that emerged mm-hmm. in international yeah. fandom whilst it's a was airing that i spent a good deal of time with my colleagues in thailand laughing at because it just showed such a shockingly a shocking lack of awareness of, of, of Thai media because Nadal is owned by GMM. Yeah. Like it's a G, it was GMM media. <laughs> I was like, no, Nadal is so much better. Look at it. Say it's so much better than together. They are on the same sides of the coin, like right. different it's, sides. It's of the same all coins. conglomerates it's at this all, point. Yeah. Like, let's all be serious. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. I, I I just saw a tweet today that made me so annoyed. <laughs> that was like I can't believe we've turned into a curmudgeon podcast of like, God damn it, Twitter. I, I am an angry old man and I embrace <laughs> my angry old manness. <laughs> I, I, I saw this tweet today that was that was so annoying because it was like all these BLs are so bad. I can't believe you watch any of them. Like so few are actually written well, blah blah blah. And I just don't understand. I don't that is every genre. That is every piece of media. There yep. is a majority that isn't great. That that yes. is just how it yes. works. works. You're that's that's just media, media because yeah. the genre is so small. You can actually look at it and see the entire yeah. right. thing yeah. in a pot and be like, "Oh, here are the good ones." But like, yeah. if I was to say that, they would be crazy to be like, 
every TV show is good. In I, I just like I don't even I don't I I was so angry at the tweet, and I understand. As I, as I said, media literacy. It's not necessarily thing, something everyone has. And there's a level of it that, like, really the thing that really bugs me is it people tweet it out so that they can like pat themselves on the back and they go, but it's good because I really know what good art is, and I'm the smart one here, and it's like. But y- you don't know anything. You're the dumbest person alive. <laughs> so so it's, it's interesting. There has actually been a really useful amount of scholarship on this tendency. Um, mm. I, I don't necessarily write about it, but there's this fantastic book by a, a media theorist named Jonathan Gray called Dislike Minded that looks at the, the performative politics of dislike. Um, on on mm. social media, particularly around fandom culture and the ways in which, like, so I actually have a colleague, um, two colleagues who have uh, an article coming out. This is about K-pop, but they they did a really sophisticated of analysis of, of discourse around only one off um, <gasps> and uh, claims of queer speaking, baiting. Speaking and, of yeah. queer baiting, I mean, they're the look at them. There it is. Yeah. And there's and this oh, is yeah, it. Like, yeah, and they're basically yeah. saying that the people use this discourse um, in order to perform. A, a, a kind of really problematic authenticity politics, you know, I, mm-hmm. I know better than everyone else, um, yeah. or they use it in service of fan wars, right? And that it's actually exactly. not productive. It's like when I want to have a good laugh, I always read <laughs> reviews on my drama list. Um, oh my God. Because they're so bad. And you I'm can't just take like, them serious. You can't. Yeah, these people like seem to think that they understand media culture, but as someone who has like been on sets, like and, and met with like product producers and, and people active in this industry in Thailand, right? I'm just or kind of like, ever used your brain. I mean, maybe <laughs> yeah, that I'm too. Just, yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of like you guys have no idea. Like one of my favorite examples was a whole bunch of people talking about the high production values of the Eighth Sense, that series from Korea, oh, and I'm yeah. like. Like the the really cheaply produced indie. I mean, it's it's good. Yes, but like it, it's yeah. it's but like it indie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's indie. And I'm just like, guys, where do you, where is the good production values? Like, what are you talking about? Right. Um, and it's this this level of fundamental media illiteracy, right? We and, yelled and about like, how that becomes, yeah. <laughs> yes, they they switched to a cell phone drone, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. come on, oh, yeah. what are we doing? And, and like, so 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 this is interesting because a lot of people see. Um, it's a for um, see I'm, I'm building to a point like they <laughs> see it's a and it's high production values because like it does um, have high production values mm-hmm. um, yeah. and then then make a quick judgment that right. it is inherently better yeah. without understanding the production contexts that, that totally. gave rise to it right, right. Um, I mean there's only five episodes right so they had yeah. more money mm-hmm. whereas like a GMM TV series which has a default of 12, 12. has less money Right, yeah. right. To right. like in, in terms of resourcing for each episode. Yeah. So, like, this is a good way to kind of talk about the politics of reception. And and one of the things that always interests me here is is like these sorts of discourses were not they they, they didn't happen in Thai. Mm-hmm. It's always international fandom that's producing mm-hmm. these sorts of discourses because the Thai consumers know. For example, the logics of media production. They understand that a series is produced shot to order rather than mm-hmm. produced in advance and then having high, very sophisticated um, post production because right. they have the budget for it. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. a GMM TV series does not have that. Right, um, it's released so on it's, YouTube yeah. for God's sake. It's the thing. It's a it's a lot of feelings for for free content that you get. Yeah. That right, you yes. can stream easily. Yeah, and yes. so I think yeah. that's that you pay zero dollars to watch. You just pay advertising yeah. eyeball yeah. money. Yes, yeah. and and then there are a few series that of course collaborate and and like GMM TV outsources most of their post production. Like that's the other thing that people don't know, and they have a variety of different people that they get to do that. Right. Um, so all of this this lack of knowledge of the the labor industry and, and the media industries and, and the norms of production in thailand leads to and, and then like for me what really bothers me is is that people then draw upon the context that they know or that they think they know more the point um and then make really uninformed claims and when it's a was was um airing it was one of the peaks of that because mm. people were comparing it to together the series which was produced very 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 
economically is yeah. how I'm mm-hmm. going to say it. Like, um, like that series, GMM TV had no idea that it would become what it became. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like, so when they were resourcing it, they didn't put a lot of money into it. Yeah. Right. Um, whereas Nadal, they knew at that point in time, they knew what they had. Yeah. Yeah. So they funded it properly. And more importantly, the capital for that series came from GMM. <laughs> so speaking of money, the last thing, the thing that made me cry hardest in this episode totally. was okay. he go, he, they have the breakdown. He tells his mom, mm-hmm. he's not going, she loses her mind, which mm-hmm. is yeah. completely fair to be honest. I also, I've talked about this in other recaps that we've done, but I love that he is so sure that his mother loves his brother more than she loves him. And it couldn't be more clear from like the that viewer's perspective that loves- she is adores yes. Tay. Like she yeah. loves yeah. him so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. And of course it's like that nagging mother energy right. that like is like a constant trope in all media yeah. everywhere on yeah. the globe, yeah. no yes. matter where you live. But like it's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. He goes upstairs, Absolutely. he goes to his room, he sees the banner that she laid out for him. He cries because it says like congratulations, I'm so proud of you or whatever. The thing he mm-hmm. cons- was like, I'm. She's not she's proud of me. Convinced, yeah. And then he finds this the like bank note. the bank note of like the money that Hoon has like given him to go. And I, that is the hardest that, I that, have yeah. ever I, cried watching. I think I dissociated. I like disconnected from watching it. It was something was like, about they've <laughs> they've really done a good job of, at on this show of there being mm-hmm. the very clear class distinction between Oyo oh, yeah, and yeah. Hey yeah. without yeah. beating you over the head. No, right? because all completely you subtle. don't, I don't feel that like, Te, you don't feel it. Right. Be, especially yeah. since Tay is so proud of himself. He carries yeah. himself like, like he can be better than everyone. Like yeah. he's like yeah, yeah, arrogant yeah. in that way. And yeah. this episode kind of crashed like all of that to realize like, Oh, these were the mm-hmm. actual real stakes that yeah. led to I him mean, feel that way. And, and and it is it is a really good example of environmental storytelling. Like any totally. any, once again, any any Thai <sighs> consumer, for instance, would see. Okay, so they're they're a restaurant like in Phuket, the old town. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we know that they're not particularly well off. Right. right, like it's just like dumb, dumb, dumb. Like you don't need to like have them like struggling to feed themselves. Say anything, you know? right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, no. It's just like it's just there, and it's yeah. very clear. I mean, and it also plays into a, a broad kind of structure within um, Thai media culture that, that, and indeed all media cultures that looks at the tensions between well, like looks at wealth inequality and, and disparity mm-hmm. and so right, forth. Right, right. Um, I mean, one of the things that's interesting about about um, some of GMM TV's series, for instance, is that they they actually have up until until only very recently they've often sidestepped this particular issue mm. and, and yeah, they're always the in the most beautiful yeah. houses you've ever <laughs> seen. It's yeah. A beautiful hotel Every that they have ca- rich as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Except for last the, Twilight. The is, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is which is the point. Like that's that's the, they're actually the reason they do that is that because they're competing against Korean dramas, and one of the reasons right. why people watch Korean dramas in Thailand. As well as the Philippines, um, is yes. there's that aspirational kind of lavishness? Like, oh, like, like that's. A, I wish yeah. that I could have that kind of money, and now I'm yes. going to go and mm-hmm. eat like. I stupid. will find an opar myself. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, so so like, like there's that, and it's very, uh, but but you're right. Like there's a subtlety to it in in mm-hmm. um, this series. I I'll admit that this this sort of thing doesn't tend to resonate with me <laughs> it's just something about the midwest midwest, it's midwest pragmatic yes. pragmatism it's the I immigrant just... for me like it's just that idea of like <laughs> for yeah it's that like the sacrifices that you the, mm-hmm. that yeah. are laid down to you so that way you don't am i in adver- i mean i'm an academic i'm, I'm just revealing my <laughs> privilege here yeah <laughs> the peasants need to feed themselves <laughs> Actually, my family is descended from French nobility. So oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, like, je je <laughs> 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 it wasn't like a leading story, right? For yeah, Tay. No. Like, I think what I what really impacted me was when it. And it was from his brother. That was the other part. Yes. But, yeah. like, the realization that, like, all of his internal struggles that he thought that he could just kind of like bulldoze through, 
like with his mm-hmm. own feelings or whatever, he mm-hmm. was always convinced that it's not actually affecting the real world. Well, and there's that it and makes it, it makes does. that undercurrent of the scene of why they're so mad mm-hmm. that he gave this spot up mm-hmm. more clear because it's like yeah. There is like, of course, it's the dream that you've been talking about since you were yeah. fucking yeah. 11 years yes. old. I'm tired of hearing about it. Why would you throw it away? Well, you but have a picture of him on the wall. But like. it's also like, <laughs> it's more, ta- it is, this is the ticket out. I mean, in, in, yeah. like, I feel like in America, it doesn't feel that way any t- to the right, same right, extent right, right, anymore right. that just going to college is going to give you yeah. the same whatever yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it feels like they are like you are throwing you are your first, future away you were mm-hmm. first you were literally yeah. the first choice mm-hmm. and and also like there's that the the fact that you know this is this is was a ticket to bangkok as well right. like that's a that's mm-hmm. a big deal yeah, um, yeah totally. because upward mobility in thailand and, and and you know phuket is is a particularly it's not it's not one of the most economically disadvantaged regions in mm-hmm. thailand far from it right. but it's still not like ba- bangkok is is a wealthy city it's a developed yeah. city yeah um and it is the the site of all migration in in thailand like you're heading to bangkok to find your future and your dreams mm-hmm. and, and right. like for 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 any once again any thai audience the the real stakes are very clear the totally fact that this person has 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 chosen to like throw that all away um and and like to support the kid who is actually you know he's got a he's got a cushy he's future gonna, yeah. hotel, right? you know right. like so, so in that one industry in phuket that makes mega bucks um so yeah there is yeah. there's like the the what what for me is is important about this this particular scene, I guess, in retrospect, as I said, I didn't really think much about it. <laughs> like it, it really kind of hammers home the sacrifice yeah. that he has mm-hmm. made. Yeah. Um and and no, once again, no spoilers. This becomes Interesting. As yeah, we move I doubt oh, that we this don't, is we not don't just gonna... go into the end and they don't talk about this ever. <laughs> I doubt again. this That's is just gonna surprising. end. I think yeah, it's gonna. Yeah, Oh, but how it's reconciled is interesting, I guess, is my point. Sure, okay, sure, sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so it finally ends, and he he's like doing the Instagram stories, and they're like, they're, "This is the gayest way to the have an gayest argument." Way. I literally was like, "Oh!" And and they reminded us at the end that these are in these fact, are two gay two men. Gay boys. Um, <laughs> they they have this argument where they're like subtweeting each other, basically yes, through Instagram stories, and <sighs> it, watching watching te break down because it's all hitting him that like he could still say he could, he he's probably still going to reject the fact that i gave him this opportunity mm-hmm. and like i've thrown there's already i know what the sacrifice is like i've seen he, he came into the room yeah. he had the whole scene blah, blah blah and now it's not even going to be used for what i the point of what i was doing is yeah. going to be thrown away oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's like I, seeing it is, it eye to eye of, the it, rejection to rejection, and he just realized that, like, oh, what I really did when I rejected him it has. It's has like gone one of the great, now. like, almost like Viola Davis level crimes. Yes! It's, like, it's the yeah, snot. Everything, everything, is, everything is pouring, yeah, pouring out of you. Yeah. Yes. Viola I mean, Davis. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Actually, that's a great, that's a great <laughs> metaphor. I mean, it's it's a good, ugly cry, right? Um, it's incredible. I would yeah. be ugly crying too. <laughs> Every time I mean, he's wailed has felt very yeah. like he, he's very, it's, it's justified because of what we've seen that he is someone who does not understand his feelings. And so like, yeah. like a child it's in many ways, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. just like the only way it can come out is by yeah, these yeah. like ugly crying and wailing. Yeah. And, and, and like, you're quite right in the sense that, it's also like there's a catharsis. So so yeah, everything has been totally. bottled, everything has been bottled up. It's very Greek, like Every, Greek tragedy, yeah, true. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and like I mean it is tragic, like yeah. in, 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 in the Aristotelian sense. Yes. Right? Like it's it is like that that immense here we have a character who has who has um through their hubris mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. like suffered. And yes, even though it's a self sacrifice, it's still the reason that it had to happen is because of their pride. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then where else can they go? Like it's either messy cry or is he going to pull an Oedipus and pull out his eyes? Um, right. Yeah. So, so like there, there needs, there's a viscerality to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that viscerality once again, like speaks to, remember I was talking about that universality, right? Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. that 
this isn't just a story of like a young queer man battling his feelings. This is a young person realizing and getting in touch with an overwhelming sense of loss. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it's grief, grief in its pure form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and indeed, like once again, this is always this is like a bit lazy media analysis, but I'll do it because why not? <laughs> um, like you know, we we can read this. The, there's like the stages of grief in this episode. Yeah. It yeah. emerges. Right. Um, we haven't quite reached acceptance yet, but it comes. Right. And and both of the characters in this episode deal with immense experiences of loss but the thing about and and and, and self-hatred and just self-disgust but the thing is that it all comes out of it extraordinarily empowered mm-hmm. yes um, eventually right and and whereas we haven't seen what happens with um because of course episode five is all about this but like the question that i pose to you guys when you, you watch that you know how, how do you think Tay manages this. Like, this is not someone who has a high EQ, let's say. Right. Right. So, so yeah. He's, oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't even know. I mean, I don't, e- I don't know what I would. So like the, the horrifying part of this, ep- of the end of the episode is when he opens his Chinese book back up and he's realized that he's cut out all the words for OAO. And so he can't even study anymore because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, he's like given fucked that himself up. Yeah. Up, up. yeah. I don't even. Uh, I can't. Hey, I don't know. Like walk in, walk into the ocean, just never be seen again. Like I don't. I genuinely like. I. It is such a. It is such a place of like you would be at the pits of despair. Mm-hmm. Like as a, especially yeah. as a teen, where like everything is so heightened because every hormone is like flooding yeah. your neuroses yeah. with every yeah. single yeah. thing. Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah. It's. It is the it is the darkest depths you could be as a person mm-hmm. at that time. Like I don't, I don't. You have lost everything. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm like I have the hives like thinking about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, and that's exactly it. Where where does he go from here? That's that's. I mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know on Friday when we watch. I was gonna say, are you watching? Are you gonna watch the sequel series as well? We're gonna open that up. Uh, I cannot go straight into that. I, yeah. I, I'm going to need like a break. I need like somebody give me a fluffy little yeah. nonsense BL to watch. I might as well just watch My Love Mix Up like two more times after this. <laughs> like just rewatch it all over again. I the you were saying something about OAO, and then I swear to God we can let you go. The you were saying this like thing, and I in the episode there is a part where. Um, Ted chases after OAO in the street and he mm. like talks to after him. class. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then OAO is like, this is after the rejection. Mm-hmm. Right. And so yeah. he's upset and he turns on his heel and he like f- puts his like jacket back on. And I mm. just, there is this real, it's so stupid. It's so small. It's nothing, but like it just bumped out to me. There is a real, as soft as OAO as a character is, mm-hmm. as soft as PP is as like a person, like his, the gender expression is so much, mm-hmm. it's so not t- like hard masculine. Yeah. There is still a strength yes. in OAO's character he's that I think weak. is like yeah. incredibly beautifully no, portrayed. Yeah, he's, he's, he's absolutely not weak. I mean, and this is, this is the thing, even after the, the, the bra scene and, and like the, the intense rejection and, and and so forth. He yes, he wallows a little bit because right. why wouldn't you? Right. Um, but then he picks himself up. He's gay, and that's what we do. Yeah. We yeah. wallow. Exactly. <laughs> he picks himself up by his bootstraps, and then gets to it. And then um, when he sees the guy who who messed him around, he gives him like the most. Yeah, he, he, he rebuffs him and it's a physical, uh, like he gives him the cold shoulder, but it's like, and then yeah. like, he's basically decided like, okay, I don't need no man. And like, I'm going to be <laughs> like my own thing and like, yeah. fuck this guy basically. Yeah. And that's very powerful. Um, and that's yeah. also very PP. I want to put out there. I just, yeah. I, I've, t- there is like, um, it's just enigmatic. There's just like, a, it's so, it feels like a, it, it's so dumb to say it feels like a real person because it just the character is just so rooted in in yeah. in 
in a, a real person that feels strength in that way. Very strong and powerful man. And it's yeah, a man, right? Like that, yeah. That's the other thing that's important to note. And, yeah. and like, in, once again, to kind of talk about PP's kind of gendered kind of um, intervention into Thai media culture, he's, he emphasizes that there is strength in in like a, a kind of more flexible masculinity. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he, he emphasizes, like he embodies in many ways the the kind of aphorism that you know when when there's this strong wind blowing the mighty oak which is strong and powerful is blown over but the willow just bends mm -hmm. right? oh and, and, yeah yeah and and like that's pee pee he's the willow whereas yeah. tear he's the oak right yeah well we finally come to the end of the episode we end every episode with a pick of who the mv are each individual mvp for the episode is do you have an option do you have one I joked before we started recording that it's the bra, but I'm going to say PP. Pee -pee. It's PP. Pee -pee. Yeah, like he's the so actor, good. PP. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, 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 like, he, like, Tay is great too. Like, Bjorgin is fantastic as well, but I, totally. I really think that, that PP is the one who who really shines in this episode. And, and yeah. just like from, from the historical perspective, knowing what I know now, like mm -hmm. it was this episode that launched him into superstardom. So mm -hmm. PP, absolutely. RJ? I'll give it to, uh, it's a shared uh, one with Tarn, with Hoon, with Boss and his friends. With the mom. Uh, uh, with the mom. Like honestly, the supporting cast does such a great job of, yeah of really making you feel that the, the um, it's like cracking, right? Like the, they yeah. have been, they've isolated themselves, especially if they are the episode conflicts. three, yeah. right? Yeah. That like they ran away for a whole day to yeah. just kind of like be together that now that like, it's all crumbling down because of the, the yeah. decisions that they're making. So, and yeah. they all do a great job. Tarn, especially like I was really scared of how she would react, but it doesn't mm. ever come. Like you said, like it doesn't come from like a, like just reaffirming, like, you know, heteronormative, whatever. It's really just yeah. like you, you are hurting people with what yes. you're doing me mm -hmm. your yes. mom and t you know oao too like you're hurting, yeah. hurting people yeah mm -hmm. so i uh, i'm gonna pick i'm gonna pick pp as well i just think like the scene pp the scene, the scene on the beach when he asks like what did he do wrong yeah is the most yes it's so yeah. really like that is that's something we've all asked ourselves, right? Like, but I think they're they're going back to the universality comment is like the reason I think why young young BL like the first love kind first of energy love, yeah. always works more than like older characters because usually that's, it's more is universal. because everyone has that experience of that first love and being mm -hmm. young and like having those feelings for the first time and so like even if you haven't had the experience of like being someone who is gay, trying to deal with someone who's like got internalized mm -hmm. homophobia, there is a level of like, why can't you just see me and love me? Yeah. Like everyone yeah. has yeah. that. I feel like yeah. story. Yeah. And he, per it's so beautifully mm -hmm. portrayed and he's yeah. so attractive, but he's so unfortunately, like he's so pitiful in the scene, yes. but he's still, it's not, he's not, again, he's not weak. I don't know. It's just like, yeah. He only I, he I mean, can do this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just remember watching that scene and like, I it was just like, no, pick me. You don't need yes. him. Yeah. 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 Um, <sighs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we come to the end of the show. Okay. Is there anywhere people can find you? Do you want to plug anything? Are there any academic works on J store? <laughs> we need, we need yeah, to find J store. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will once again r remind viewers who may have forgotten. So I do have a book, Boys Love Media in Thailand, um, that came out from Bloomsbury Academic in 2023. Um, I apologize for the price, but it is an interesting kind of study, I think. Um, and also you can always find me um, on... Well, I'll say Twitter for now, um, at T <laughs> um, but I might be migrating soon. But I also do have a um, personal website, uh, thomasbodenet.com, 
that you can um, watch a few of my recordings. Um, I haven't uploaded, I haven't had time to really manage it this year, um, but it is all there. All of my scholarship and, and so forth is available um, through links and things through that. Um, it's probably the easiest way to stay on top of what I do. Um, so, yes, and, and also, like, I'm always kind of happy to chat with people on social media as long as you're That's sensible. True. Yep. So feel free to always drop sure, me a line. Can, you can yeah. invite him to a German dinner. <laughs> I mean, you two yeah, can share absolutely. share a schnitzel with Doctor Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, and and like I, I genuinely do enjoy meeting people, Twitter mutuals and things. So feel free. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> joining us today. Thank you about once this. again for having having me. Of know, and letting me run my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it was our it was truly, truly our, our pleasure. pleasure.